out there today's video is entitled playing the changes have you ever come across a song and you start off and it's like okay the beginning chord is a G uh, I know what I can do I can play a blues pentatonic over that man I'll be right on it and then the next chord comes up and you're totally way off base you're like the G's not working over the second chord what's happening well you need to play the tonalities of the second chord and then switch into the tonalities of the first chord. It's a complicated thing because it's, this is not key center playing. This is what you call playing the changes. You know who you are. <laughs> and if you can do that, man, you one bad mofo. You know, because not all songs just, you know, stay in the key center. Some change. You know, that's the thing. So... I'm going to go ahead and play you a snippet of try to play in a key center so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. The first chord is going to be a G power chord, which doesn't have a coloring note. The second one's going to be an A. It's going to be an A note. You can clearly see that the G doesn't fit over that A. You're going to have some dissonance on that G blues scale. But I've got the solution. So I'm going to play the snippet with the two chord changes, and you'll see how they don't match. And then I'll come back and I'll tell you what I'm going to do to fix it. Here it is. Give it a second. Here's the G Blues over both chord changes. quite sound right there was there was some dissonance in there I mean you can get it to work and a lot of times when you're playing people ain't really paying attention but the musicians are paying attention and they know that kind of stuff you know there's a lot of us out there you know you talk to a keyboard player and a keyboard player doesn't just fit one scale over everything because the keys on the keyboard change when you start on C center you know what I'm saying then you go to D minor it's a whole different set of keys on key center would be C to C, right? In the key of C. And they're all white notes. But the second you go to a different key, you know what I'm saying? You start on a different different set of keys. And that's where things start changing. That's why a keyboard player would make a phenomenal guitar player or a lead player because they play the changes. And if a guitar player can play the changes and not key center, they won't bad mofo. So I'm going to go ahead and play this next round with the key changes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a G blues scale, a G pentatonic, I'm gonna play it over the G progression, but when I get into the A, I'm gonna go into the A tonalities, and you'll see how it matches up a lot better than what we did on the first try around. And then I'll do an A and B comparison. I'll throw this up on an editor where you can see exactly what I'm talking about. You can match the two and you're like, oh my gosh, he was right. I do need to learn that. Where do I start? Can somebody teach me? I don't want to take the long way around, you know what I'm saying? You want to get right to the point and get it done. So, here it is. I'm going to play the key change tonalities. So just give it a second while the beat kicks in. Here it is.
So I think you got the idea. You see how that grouping of of playing there followed the chord itself? That's a really tricky thing to do because in order to do that, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the blue. Let's take a look at the G chord, right? Let's take let's play a G minor. Over a G minor, you're going to have you count your notes. They're going to be the one, the three, and the five make up the chord. So if you start on G and you count mu alphabetically, musically, you're going to go G, A, B, C, and D. So the one, three, and five are going to make the notes of the G chord. G, A, B, C, and D. So it'll be G, B, and D. G, B, and D make a G chord. So if you've made the G chord, those three notes should be in your in your in your in your scale. So in G minor, the third is flat. That's your coloring note. That's what colors the chord. Otherwise, you can play fifth chords all day long, and you don't know if they're major or minor. Like that's a fifth chord. It has no coloring note. The second you add that flat at third, now you got a minor chord. If you sharpen that flat at third and make it natural, now you got a major chord. So you can easily see over a G minor, a blues scale works. G major, the uh, G minor pentatonic doesn't sound so good, but a lot of people use it because that's the tonalities they're used to. But most country cats, well, they'll play a G uh, a G major pentatonic over that instead of a G minor pentatonic. So G major over a G major pentatonic over a G major chord, and a G minor pentatonic over a G minor chord. So I'll play the G minor, and I'll play a G minor pentatonic. That's G minor. Now here's G major. I'll play a G major pentatonic over it. Oops, sorry about that. Try it again. G major pentatonic over a G major chord. Now, if you went from G major to A minor, let's see what you got. So you basically wouldn't be able to, well, you could if you start going into the modes. That's a trickier subject. That'll trip your mind up and spin it around and tie it into spaghetti noodles. <laughs> if you don't understand this stuff, you're diving in pretty deep there. And maybe that's where you need to be. You need to learn this stuff. Because if you don't know it, you're going to just be, you know, considered a one-trick pony like my brother Freddie says. He says, you ever seen that one-trick pony when you walk on over to the, the, the carnival or the fair or, or, you know, the Barnabum Circus? And that guy announces on the thing, hey, everybody, I'm about to bring out Pinto the Wonder Horse. And he brings out that pony, right? And in everybody's amazement, that pony's standing there. He gets out his little stick. He taps the leg on the knee, and that leg lifts up its leg. And that's all the pony does, and everybody stands in amazement. Whoa, that was great. What else is there? He hits the leg again, and the pony lifts up the leg. And that's all the pony can do, because it's a one-trick pony. Don't let that be you. <laughs> like, never. So if you go from a G major, you're playing a G major pentatonic to an A minor, you want to play the A minor pentatonic. Let's see how that would work. I'm going to give a try on that. So G major and a G major pentatonic to an A minor and an A minor pentatonic. Here it goes. Sounds better. It's a good way to connect the fretboard. 
Let's see what would happen if I just picked a random grouping of chords. Let's see and see if I could make them work. So. Yeah, so let's try that. No, no, because G major and A, no, no, A minor and C major are the same tonalities. You just concentrate on the, on the tonal root, which is going to be a complicated subject for a lot of people. Oh, maybe I could try it. Let's see if I played a solo trying to concentrate on the tonal roots and see if you can see the melodic structure of that without the chords being implied. And you can kind of imply what chord is being played behind it. Let's see if that'll work. So let's try that. And I'll, I'll go ahead and it'll be a G, an A minor, and a C. So here it goes. You could almost hear the chords being implied behind that without actually without playing the chords. Now let's try to do the same thing key centering and see what you come with up with with just staying on the A tonality at the A minor tonality as your tonal root because it covers that too. And it's gonna sound like you're going nowhere. <laughs> an A minor uh, uh, an A minor pentatonic and it doesn't sound like you're going anywhere you're just playing the A minor you can't hear the chord tonality changes but playing the changes you can I'm gonna go I'm gonna I'm gonna play the uh, the relative pentatonics to a G major an A minor and a C major without playing the implied chord progression and you're gonna see how this you can actually hear the implied tonal changes here it goes again. message me in the comments you got any uh ideas you maybe you can help school me on some of this stuff you know what i'm saying i'm just an old bluser bro i've been doing it for a while you know but i ain't as good as some of my friends and, and you know but that's okay you know what i'm saying i can hold my own i know what i'm doing now i'm not really a lead player but i know my way around that fretboard it helps to know you know your circle of fifths and what groupings go in because that's where the modes come in one of these days, I'll tie your brain into a spaghetti noodle with modes and really trip you up on that. But that's a different story for a different day, and uh, we'll get back to that one. Anyways, I'm glad you stopped on in here. You was able to listen to my ramblings for a while. But I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video, and um, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe like and share the video man we're just a small youtube channel you know but um jump on in there and get it done